This video is about the egg bar shoe and its impact on the distribution of pressure, the orientation of the digital bones and the process of placing the hoof. The data presented here were raised by a scientific cooperation between Werfmann and the Institute of Veterinary Anatomy Leipzig. The egg bar shoe is a modification regarding the dorso palmar level. It is a bar shoe with a welded in bar offering palmar support. The bar was positioned roughly underneath the balls which places it outside the silhouette of the hoof. This increases the supporting surface in the posterior part of the hoof. In this case the frog does not bear any weight. It is possible to pad the frog so that it takes part in the weight bearing process. However, this is subject to a different video. The manufacturing of an egg bar shoe is demonstrated by Mitch Taylor in the corresponding video. The egg bar shoe is a therapeutic shoe which is used in inflammations of the deep digital flexor tendon and illnesses of its accessory ligament. Additional indications are painful processes in the palmar part of the hoof like chronic inflammation and the podotrechlea and desmopathies of the short digital ligaments. Apart from that, the shoe is used in order to restrict the hoof mechanism and to immobilise fractures and horn fissures as well. Here we take a closer look at the deep digital flexor tendon and the structures of the podotrochlea in order to better understand the discussed illnesses and the way the egg bar shoe works. The deep digital flexor tendon is the united tendon of the three-headed deep digital flexor muscle which arises from the medial epicondyl of the humerus as well as the ulna and radius. This strong tendon crosses the carpal bend and is supplemented by an accessory ligament two-thirds down the cannon bone. Across the fetlock joint, the superior digital flexor tendon forms a cuff embracing the deep digital flexor tendon which rests on the sliding surface of both proximal sesamoids. Distal to that, the deep digital flexor tendon passes the navicular bone and inserts as quite a broad tendon in the coffin bone. In this area, it is part of the podotrochlea, which consists of the navicular bone, whose palmar surface serves as a sliding surface for the deep digital flexor tendon. Underneath the wide final part of the tendon lies the navicular bursa. In addition, there is a short ligament between the navicular bone and coffin bone, which is often involved in pathological processes. The structures indicated here are subject to considerable biomechanic stress so that injuries of the deep digital flexor tendon and the podotrochlear apparatus are especially common, the reason being the orientation of the equine digital bones and the resulting dynamic stress. One of the peculiarities of the equine distal extremity is the hyperextension of the fetlock joint. This subjects the deep digital flexor tendon to a certain amount of natural tension and causes additional pressure on the navicular bursa and the navicular bone. Flat hooves are especially predisposed for overworking the deep digital flexor tendon and illnesses in the palmar hoof region. In addition, major tensile forces affect the deep digital flexor tendon during unrollment. The longer the toe, or in other words, the more the toe to support ratio is to the latter's disadvantage, the more tension is necessary for the hoof to unroll. So a steeper orientation of the hoof has a relieving effect on the deep digital flexor tendon and podotrochlear region. With regard to the biomechanic effects of the egg bar shoe, we first discuss the impact on the orientation of the digital bones. The radiological examinations of the toe were carried out with a digital system by Geert X-ray International and a wireless detector by Canon. For the examination, the horse was placed so that both forelegs stood parallelly on even ground in the most natural position achievable. This was in order to obtain reproducible radiographs which enabled us to compare the alignment of the digital bones of five horses when shod with different shoes. As measurements were supposed to be taken in the radiographs, we used a special x-ray block by Eponatech. This block is especially fabricated with internal reference points, enabling the subsequent calibration in Metron hoof software. In order to evaluate the shoe's effects on different grounds, 
we modified the x-ray block so that either a wooden board or a silicon pad plus sand could be attached to the upper side. Thereby, the shoe's properties on firm as well as soft ground could be evaluated. When taking standardised radiographs, it is essential to introduce a permanent and correct mark on which the x-ray beam can be centred. In this case, the centre of the frog and the widest part of the hoof were used as reference to apply the marks after trimming. The central ray aimed at the solar margin. Using this technique, we obtained a lateral and frontal image of the respective hoof on firm and soft ground. Now we explain the egg bar shoe's influence on the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone in relation to the ground. The barefoot situation, as well as the usage of standard horseshoes in five horses, serve as a comparison. Every radiographic examination was carried out on a firm wooden block and a block with soft padding, in order to capture the effects of the shoes on the orientation of the digital bones on different types of ground. When taking the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone into account, we see that an egg bar shoe has no influence on firm ground when compared to unshod horses or standard shoes. The coffin bone's position remains impartial to the type of shoe. On soft ground, there are generally differences between the four types of ground, irrespective of the shoe. As a rule, the mediolateral orientation of the coffin bone alters from firm to soft ground. On soft ground, the, according to the build, heavily loaded part of the hoof can sink in, causing the angle of the coffin bone in relation to the ground to change. This effect is often intensified in hoof shoe modifications that present the hoof from sinking into the ground in that area by a palmer support. The following images illustrate this. The dorsopalmar alignment of the coffin bone is heavily influenced by an egg bar shoe. The same references as mentioned before were consulted for assessing the palmar angle of the coffin bone in relation to the ground, and all measurements were carried out on both types of ground. Usage of the firm x-ray block shows no differences between unshod, standard shoe and egg bar shoe, as only the surface is modified. However, if sinking into the ground is possible, we discover that palmar angle of the coffin bone increases compared to barefoot or standard shoe. The coffin bone's alignment becomes steeper. The tip of the toe sinks in deeper than it does barefoot or when shod with a standard shoe, while the posterior part of the hoof can't sink into the ground as much because of the palmar support. Therefore, the coffin bone's angle is steeper in relation to firm ground as well as in comparison to a standard shoe on soft ground. This relieves the deep digital flexor tendon and the podotrochlear apparatus on soft ground. The toe to support ratio is of fundamental biomechanic importance. As a starting point, the identification of the rotational centre of that part of the short pastern bone which constitutes the coffin joint has been established. Beginning at that point, a perpendicular is dropped, which divides the sole of the hoof into a supporting part lying heelward, and a lever arm continuing toeward to the point of breakover. The size of the lever arm is bigger the longer the toe is. This parameter can be altered by moving the point of breakover forwards or backwards, or by changing the dorsopalmar orientation of the hoof too. It is crucial, however, that the longer the toeward lever arm, the more stress for the deep digital flexor tendon and the navicular bursa. The important toe-to-support ratio is considerably influenced by the egg bar shoe on firm ground. Introducing palmer support, together with the elongation of the shoe as far as the balls, modifies the toe-to-support ratio in favour of the supporting area. It is interesting to see, however, how the leverage forces influence the orientation of the hoof on soft ground. It is quite obvious that the heel sinks deeper into the ground when a standard shoe is being used than when the horse is shod with an egg bar shoe. 
thereby the hoof and the coffin bone become steeper in relation to the ground with an egg bar shoe. By putting the rotational centre in relation to the point of breakover and the branch's tips, we gain the anterior lever arm over which the horse has to unroll and the posterior lever arm which influences the placing of the hoof. The ratio of anterior to posterior lever arm determines the tension on the deep digital flexor tendon. Its onset is located at the palmar surface of the coffin bone and this strong tendon changes its direction when passing the podotrochlea. When we transfer the situation with a standard shoe on soft ground, depicted by the narrow lines, to the hoof shod with an egg bar shoe, we see the following. As the hoof's orientation is steeper, the point of breakover moves backward and the anterior lever arm is shortened. Unrollment becomes easier. This changes the course of the deep digital flexor tendon, causing less strain on soft ground even when the horse isn't moving. Apart from that, this structure is stressed less during unrollment because of the junction of the anterior lever arm. The elongation of the palmar support as far as the balls increases the length of the posterior lever arm so that different forces operate during footing. In conclusion, the egg bar shoe has significant influence on the dynamics and biomechanics of the course of motion. Every horseshoe influences the way pressure forces are distributed across the hoof capsule apart from their effects on bones, tendons and ligaments. Here we demonstrate what kind of ground reaction forces develop between shoe and ground and how they are relayed to the hoof capsule. For this purpose, two pressure sensors by Megascan were simultaneously fixed to the hoof. Both forelimbs were shod and the left one used for measurements in each case. Five horses were available and the barefoot situation as well as the standard shoe served as reference. As the sensor foils are very thin, one could be fastened with two nails between shoe and hoof and another one with tape between shoe and ground. All the measurements were carried out on a straight trail consisting of concrete, a rubber mat and firm and deep sand because the effect of different shoes is very much dependent on the condition of the ground. The following parameters are of importance for the evaluation of the pressure measurements. The intensity of the pressure forces is colour coded with red illustrating pressure peaks, i.e. maximum pressure, and orange, yellow, green, light blue and dark blue signifying decreasing pressure. Furthermore, we look at the position of the centre of force which is indicated by the black and white box while standing or during the main stance phase. In order to evaluate the distribution pattern of the resulting pressure, the hoof is divided into the following parts and the stress in percent for different shoes is given. Apart from that, the hoof can be divided into a lateral and medial and an anterior and posterior half. First we look at those pressure forces which develop between shoe and firm ground, here concrete, during walking. A standard shoe without a rolled toe and a toe cap is compared to the egg bar shoe. The standard shoe creates a difficult picture with a broad supporting surface and pressure peaks in the toe area. The pressure distribution pattern of an egg bar shoe differs from this situation. While there are no discernible differences in the toe and branch areas when compared to a standard shoe, the shoe's bar is clearly visible in the posterior part of the hoof. The palmar support provides a larger area to distribute the pressure on. So how does the shape of the toe and the resulting pressure distribution pattern influence the hoof capsule while walking? We can see that the pressure is passed on from the shoe to the hoof on firm ground. The surface modification in the form of a palmar bar is situated outside the hoof silhouette and shows hardly any differences in the pressure distribution pattern when compared to a standard shoe.
The egg bar shoe displays its real effect on soft ground which allows different parts of the hoof to sink in. Here too, the standard shoe without a rolled toe is used for the comparison. When the shod hoof sinks in to its full extent, the entire frog and sole bear weight. The shoe is clearly visible as a thin light blue to green line from toe to heels because it is there that the pressure is at its maximum. Looking at the pressure distribution patterns of an egg bar shoe in deep sand while walking, the following becomes apparent. The toe is under more pressure because of the steeper alignment. There are hardly any differences between the shoes in the centre part of the hoof. Because sinking into the ground is hindered by the elongated bar in the palmer part of the hoof, this sheet concerns itself with the extent to which the pressure forces are projected from the shoe onto the hoof capsule while walking. It becomes evident that the toe is under more stress because of the steeper alignment. There are hardly any differences in the middle part of the hoof when compared to the standard shoe situation. When looking at the posterior part of the hoof, we see the frog doesn't carry any weight as it doesn't touch the bar. The entire pressure is passed onto the heel. Because the hoof can't sink into the ground as much in this part due to the palmar support as it would do with a standard shoe, there is more counter pressure in this area. Consequently, there are pressure peaks in the heel region. In conclusion, the egg bar shoe reveals its effects especially on soft ground. So, if the horse in question is mainly kept on firm ground, the majority of the egg bar shoe's effects get lost. Compared to a standard shoe, there are significant differences in the pressure distribution pattern. When the horse is shod with a standard shoe, the branches sink into the ground and the frog carries weight on soft ground. With an egg bar shoe, the posterior part of the hoof doesn't sink in as much, causing the ground's counter pressure to rise. In this case, there is no pad underneath the frog so that it doesn't carry any weight in contrast to a standard shoe. Consequently, the posterior frog region is unburdened on all types of ground. On the one hand, this is of special advantage in illnesses of the pododroclea region. On the other hand, the increasing pressure is distributed solely on the heels so that this part of the hoof shows distinct pressure peaks on soft ground. The percentage of the dorsal palmar pressure distribution pattern shifts towards the anterior half of the hoof because of the steeper alignment and the no weight bearing frog. Therefore, when using an egg bar shoe for therapeutic purposes, the differing pressure distribution of different shoes between shoe and hoof capsule has to be considered, particularly the significantly higher strain on the heels in combination with the restriction of the hoof mechanism has to be taken into account. In general, the type of ground, the size of the weight-bearing surface and the counter-pressure of the ground influence the pressure distribution pattern the most. The footing pattern is formed out of several steady steps. These are averaged into one picture so that it shows the migration of the centre of force during the main stance phase. For that purpose, the horses were led along a straight line on the different types of ground without distraction or lateral movements of the head. One measurement was 10 seconds long with 100 pictures taken per second. During the subsequent analysis with the hoof stopper by Megascan, the first and last step of each measurement were discarded so that six to seven steady steps could be evaluated. The average picture shows the footing, the movement during the main stance phase, the unrollment, and the point of breakover. When we compare the footing pattern with a standard shoe to the one with an egg bar shoe, there is little effect on the individual footing pattern by this modification, as these three examples show. It is quite certain, however, that the elongation of the palmar lever arm by the welded-in bars alters the footing phase so that the strain on tendons and ligaments is different. Therefore, it is necessary to consider to which degree the palmar bar is elongated. When regarding the footing pattern on the different types of ground, 
we see that the individual footing on firm ground, in this case starting laterally across the outer toe, seems very distinct. The more the hoof can sink into the ground, however, the more evenly the pressure is distributed as a larger area takes in the weight-bearing process. The footing pattern becomes plainer. Even on soft ground, the egg bar shoe has no effect on the main stance phase. Summing up, the hoof with an egg bar shoe doesn't sink into the ground as much because of the elongated palmar support, whereas the toe tends to sink in more easily. So hoof and coffin bone become steeper in relation to the ground in comparison to the standard shoe situation. Based on the biomechanical assumptions of other study groups like Denoir et al, this causes the upper toe bones to descend and the extension of the fetlock joint to increase. The positive effect of the steeper coffin bone angle is the impact it has on the deep digital flexor tendon and the podotrochlear region, consisting of the onset of the deep digital flexor tendon, the navicular bone, the navicular bursa and the distal navicular ligament. The descent of the upper digital bones increases the strain on the sensory ligaments, the superficial digital flexor tendon and the sesamoidian ligaments on soft ground. The described effects on the alignment of the upper toe bone seem to be highly dependent on the individual conformation of the toe and the whole limb. In addition, the examination of radiographs can only ever be a static snapshot leaving questions about the evaluation of biomechanic effects and the resulting dynamic processes unanswered. Special examinations regarding this point will follow. It is important to remember the egg bar shoe's effect on the palmar part of the hoof on soft ground caused by the change in the alignment of the digital bones and the change in pressure distribution. The digital bones and the hoof cartilage are joined together by a complex set of ligaments which is also affected by the use of an egg bar shoe. The short digital ligaments in the palmar hoof region as well as the distal navicular ligament experience less strain on soft ground too. When using a shoe modification like this, usually the effects on tendons, ligaments, bones and cartilage or the modification of dynamic processes are at the centre of attention. Often the impact on the surrounding hoof capsule takes a back seat. By changing the pressure distribution and the supporting surface, we influence the sensitive blood circulation and the horn architecture significantly. On the whole, all the anatomic structures forming the distal extremity form a close regional and functional relationship. It is safe to assume that relief for one structure causes additional strain on the counterpart so that the efficacy of a shoe modification has to be evaluated individually in every case.